Hello, my name is Alfredo Pinto. I'm the presenting author of the paper entitled Absorptive Capacity and Internationalization Process, a Locking Case. Uppsala is the most used model to explain internationalization process. In this model, the experiential knowledge plays a major role in the international commitment of the multinational enterprise. But Johan Sonnenwald don't explain what happens to the experiential knowledge when it gets into the M&E, and the academy itself has moved quickly to cross-sectional studies where the how and why of the internationalization process are not the focus. Our study aims to explain how relevant external information is identified, acquired, and incorporated into the Uppsala state variables. As Uppsala evolved, adding dynamic capabilities in the model, the dynamic capability called absorbed capacity has been used in international business research to address questions related to knowledge absorption and its application into firm's capabilities. We applied this framework to study the knowledge absorption and impact on Uppsala state variables. More information on our framework and theoretical background is available on the full version of the paper that we have made available to the conference participants. An inductive single case study, allowed deep analysis with thick details, was conducted in a longitudinal approach with horizontal and vertical contextualized analysis which allowed us to understand the progression of the trajectory of both international commitment and knowledge absorption. We have chosen the automotive industry not only because of its relevance and structure of knowledge, but also for the disruptive moment that suggests that relevant knowledge processes are currently widespread. A revelatory case of a Brazilian Tier 2 manufacturer successfully inserted in the automotive global value chain was selected. Zen, formerly Irmão Zen, international history dates back to 1960 and tells about a crescent and successful history of international commitment to the automotive global value chain, making it compatible with the theory and research question. Methodological rigor was guaranteed with multiple perspective views, triangulation of primary and secondary data, plus a validation workshop with interviewees. Knowledge absorption and commitment processes followed an incremental development with an intertwined logic. Knowledge absorption capabilities and international commitment affected each other in a virtual cycle as predicted by absorptive capacity and internationalization process theories. The international trajectory of Zen, with its main milestones and critical events, is depicted in this timeline. Besides the contribution on the processor relations between knowledge absorption and internationalization commitment, we understand that the most interesting contribution of our research lies on the identification of the lock-in state of the studied company, a crescent technological catch-up strategy caused a core rigidity despite the joint development of dynamic capability commonly related to strategic renewal and creation of competitive advantage such as international dexterity and absorptive capacity. The identification of the lock-in states was an expected result that required us to return to the literature to understand the phenomenon what confirms the inductive approach of our research. The catch-up of technological capabilities to increase the commitment to the automotive network required a deep level of formalization expressed on the engineering integration routines often based on incremental innovations of products and processes, east est exploitative innovation. The necessary technological catch-up process followed by Zen resembles the paradox between core capabilities creation and core rigidity formation. Companies which invest heavily in catching up technological capabilities mostly rely on incremental innovation of products and processes to gain access to global markets as it is the case of the second and third tiers in the automotive global value chain. Knowing that the long process of catching up of technological capabilities is commonly necessary to M&E to gain access to knowledge-intensive global networks, and that this process is based on incremental exploitative innovation, we posit that 
the higher the commitment of emerging market multinational enterprise to knowledge intensive value chains, the higher the development of exploitative technological innovation. In the case studied, given the typical emerging market multinational enterprises' scant resources, the strategic response of the managers to the highly structured hierarchy and knowledge governance of the AGVC was to aim lower tiers of the value chain. Successful outcomes of such strategy led to a path where exploratory technological capabilities were of secondary importance, and the company conquered a well-disputed but subservient place in the value chain. Following this logic, it is reasonable to posit that the long-term commitment of emerging market multinational enterprise to lower tiers of knowledge-intensive value chains has a negative impact on the development of exploratory technological innovation. Dynamic capabilities such as absorptive capacity and international ambidexterity that guaranteed competitive advantages throughout Zen's international history now, under a highly dynamic environment, are failing to create competitive advantage to sustain the international commitment. The virtual cycle of knowledge creation and international commitment in which self-reinforcing mechanisms were in place led to a path-dependent trajectory that imprinted cognitive limitations in the corporate culture. Even having, having acknowledged the technology disruption scenario in the auto industry and incrementing the investments in R&D, the company has not been able to develop exploratory radical innovation capabilities in more than 10 years of efforts as it is known that the failure of a company in developing exploratory capabilities in a highly dynamic industry compromises its survival, we posit that, under highly industry dynamism, the commitment of emerging market multinational enterprise successfully positioned in lower tiers of knowledge-intensive value chains will decrease in an inverted U-shaped curve. These propositions connect the evidences collected in the case with the extant literature. Nevertheless, we acknowledge that different reasoning could explain the locking state of Zen. The findings of our case study have theoretical contributions to the internationalization process literature, showing the intertwined relation between the knowledge-creating process and the state variable of Uppsala model. We showed how it happens and why it happens. Furthermore, some assumptions of Uppsala 2017 were tested and corroborated in a specific context as the authors Johansson and Vaughan request in the Uppsala 2017 article. The practical implications of our study refer especially to the company study that was not aware of such lock-in states and now they are in a better position to evaluate and redirect their international trajectory. This contribution is possibly applicable to the numerous companies around the globe in a similar situation as well. Our findings are based on evidences from a single case study, therefore the proposed relations are not generalizable. Furthermore, the selection of a case of an emerging market multinational enterprise is strategically positioned in the second tier of the automotive global value chain directly influences the results. We acknowledge such limitation and understand that different results may emerge from diverse contexts. Future research should test the proposed relations in multiple case studies, possibly including on the sampling companies in different levels of a given network, distinct industries, or also originated from traditional countries. We thank you for watching our presentation and we remain at your disposal for comments and doubts on the AIB online platform and also on the emails below.